good evening, good evening, and welcome to our virtual Bible study class. I am Pastor Gary Mack here with you this evening, and I just welcome you all. I pray that you would join us tonight in a word from the Lord as we break bread together. Uh, we ask and we invite you to join us, please, on Facebook and um, YouTube, our Facebook channel, you know, Tune in to a Shallow Baptist Church. Just click on it, like and share. Call somebody up, welcome them, tell them there's a word for them tonight. And um, on our Facebook, it's uh, SBC Praise Church. Once again, I'm Pastor Gary Mack. Honored and privileged to be here with you this evening to share a word of God with you. Our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Allen Duncans. And I wanna thank him for this opportunity. Uh, for now, me to film at home. Um, so if you hear a heater kick on anything, I'm down in my man cave. Uh, I got the grandkids' pictures behind me. And we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. Um, I can relax. I'm home. And um, I pray that you will have uh, exactly what you've been searching for tonight. I believe there's a word just for you. Well, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. And we welcome you. We welcome everyone uh, to our broadcast, and Lord, we pray, Lord, that whatever they may be going through, that they will find peace, godly peace, in the Word of God. I thank you for what you have given me, uh, for your people, and I thank you how that blessed me, Lord, the time that I've spent with you, studying, and Lord, I just believe by faith that it's going to meet needs, whoever here. So Lord, have your way. Lord, join in with us, Lord. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Kind of going to pick off where we left off on um, last week. And uh, the title of the class is Finding Your Peace in the Middle of Chaos. How many, how many said, I need some peace? I, I, I need some peace. I'm looking for some peace in my life. I've been going through enough turmoil, uh, problems, issues, whatever it may have been going through, sickness, whatever it may be, uh, we can relate. We do know how the enemy works. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he came that we might have life and that more abundantly. But the enemy, listen up very carefully, the enemy is the only one that comes after you. Sometimes our own flesh turns against us. And we're going to find out tonight through the word of God how God will give us or show us through his word, his godly peace. Not at the world peace, but godly peace. That peace that passes all understanding. Amen? We're going to move right on. Chaos. Chaos. We went over this last week. Chaos is complete disorder or confusion. I have a screen on the back. I hope you can see it. Uh, if not, just, just follow right on. I need you to grab your pencils and pens. I do have some great information through the Word of God just for you, so I ask that you continue to um, listen intently. Chaos, chaos. I need peace. I need to find some peace in the middle of my disordered life, my confused life. I need some peace. And one thing I love about the Word of God, you can find peace in the Word of God. You have to seek after it. You have to search after it. And one scripture I do love is, I'm going to quote it, Psalms 41. Please write this down. Keep this near you because this is something that really blessed me. When you're hungry and thirsting after righteousness, it gives us an example about the deer. It says, Psalms 42 and 1, it says, As the deer panteth after the water brook, so my soul panteth for you. I'm, 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 I'm in need of something. I need some peace. I, 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 I need to be close to you, Lord. As my as the deer panteth at the water brook, so does my soul panteth after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go, this is the NIV version, when can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, trouble. Chaos. It, imagine David as he's writing this. He said, as the deer panteth after the water brook, I'm searching for some peace. 
I, I'm, my life is a wreck. I, you know, I've been anointed to be king. I've been blessed. I've been, I've been able to get some things that I wanted financially set. But my soul is not at rest or at peace. And he said, I desire God. Because David knew from God he can get the peace that he was looking for. The peace from his enemies. The peace from his mistakes. The peace from his flesh acting up. Peace from all these things that cause him not to be able to rest. And I'm not just talking about sleep, laying your head on a pillow. I'm talking about that peace that no matter what your situation looks like, and no matter what you're going through, you can find some rest, some godly rest. Godly peace means no matter how bad it looks, I know everything is going to be all right. Can, can I get an amen? I just need somebody praying with me. I, I'm excited all by myself about what God is doing here tonight. He said, my tears have been my food day and night. <clears throat> I've been going through this thing for a while. Not a short term. Day and night. Day and night. I've been going through this. But my soul, my desires... I thought I messed up. Lord, I desire you. And as a deer panteth at the water broke, my soul panteth for you. While men say to me all the day long, where is your God? Can I stop there right for a second? What, what I love about this text is that people are watching you. Even David said, the, the people, the men say, where is your God? The one you, when you killed Goliath. The one who said, this uncircumcised Philistine defied the name of our God. They remember the, the words that David said. And, and David said, uh, come bless the Lord with me and let us uh, exhort his name together. David had those moments where he was excited about the Lord. I imagine people was watching his actions. But then when trouble came in David's life, when he couldn't see his way out, David found himself in a corner and other people seeing him. They've seen him afraid. They've seen him running from Saul. They've seen some actions of David that didn't seem like a godly man, seemed like a man who was living in fear. Can you relate to that? Some of the blessings in your life, I hope I'm not too close to the screen. If I am, no, you forgive me. Uh, but I want you to hear what I'm saying. Um, and I move my hands a lot too, so just bear with me. David had been through a lot. He had been through ups and downs. But at this moment, David said, Lord, my, my, my soul, I need some peace. And I'm hungry for you. I know if I get in your presence, I know I get right standing with you. I know I have the peace that I'm looking for. David was searching for peace. And the reason why I know that David was searching for peace, because this text wouldn't make sense any other way. Because as a deer panted after the water broke, a deer is thirsty and is thirsty from the enemy trying to take it out or to kill it. The deer has been running for his life, exhausted, tired of being beat up by the enemy, tired of being beat up by the situation, can't find no rest. And then he run across the screen. He said, my heart seeks for this screen, this water flowing. This calming sensation or sound in my ear. That deer said, I, I I need to get in that area where I can fill my belly to satisfaction with water and fulfillment. I need to get. And that's an example of what God is. He fills us. He's like that stream of water. Not stale water sitting in a pond where it's not moving. But that move, moving and living water. That's what we're going to talk about tonight because somebody out there has been living without this peace. Yes, you've been going to church. Yes, you've been doing, paying your tithes. Yes, you've been asking the Lord for giving, helping people and having mercy on people and, and, you know, putting up with them. And when you normally wouldn't, you would cut them off. For them. You're going out your way to do good and you're finding yourself without this rest, without this peace. I love about that text, the deer panted up the word broke, so does my heart pant again. And, and also, I want to give you another scripture. Sometimes, uh, even though we're running and looking for this living water, we find ourselves 
sometimes having to wait. Yes, I want to talk about waiting. Remember last week, the last time I taught uh, this message, we talked about the three things that uh, lead you to peace. And one thing I wanted you to be clear, but I need you to hear me clearly, that pain is one of the tools that God allowed the enemy to use on us and we use on ourselves is pain that draws us to this peace. I was able to show you the contrast, how the pain led to peace. There's many different stories in the Bible where they went through some series of pains, some chapters in their life that were uncomfortable, that was not not something they wanted to brag about or testify about. But if they had eraser and they can erase a part of their life, that would be the part of their life that they would erase. So one thing I love about this text that it reminds us, even though our heart might be uh, seeking after God, sometimes we got to learn how to wait. I'm going to get to the PowerPoint, but right now I just want to go over some things that when I was studying and the Lord uh, spoke to me and I just wanted to share with you because it was a blessing to me that in order to have this peace, you have to seek for it. In order to get this peace that we're looking for, sometimes you got to wait for it. And Psalms 41, same book, Psalms 41, uh, verse 1 and 2, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. This is the NIV version again. Out of the mud and the mar. My feet were stuck. I was in a bad place. I was in a dirty place that was weighty. It was heavy on my back. Heavy weight on my back. On my spirit. On my mind. My thoughts were messed up. I was all jacked up. I couldn't see straight. I couldn't think straight. So he said, I called upon the Lord. And he turned to me. Oh, ain't it good if the Lord turned to you? When you can pray and you know you turned the head of God, that he turned and looked towards you, that he know that your prayers or your cries brought attention to him. But even though God might turn to you, even though God is always there where he never leave you, nor will you say, these are the promises of God. Even though God promised never to leave us, Sometimes he will still make you wait. I, I wish I could get a witness out there. Sometimes the Lord will still make you wait because it's something that God needs to get out of you to keep you from running back to the traps and the snares of the enemy. You can't have peace running back to those same old uh, locations or same old habits you had that God delivered you from. Yes, they, they're not going to go away. They're always going to try to come back up and creep back up. But as you seek after God, like David said, as I seek after, as a deer seeketh after that water brook, as you seek after God, that, that safe place, that refreshing place, after you seek after God and you find him again, you, you, you ever prayed and, and you felt God's presence? Good God, I feel it right now. Where, where you prayed and you know God heard you. That's what he's saying. He said, he said he waited patiently. I waited patiently for the Lord, meaning that I had nowhere else to go. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no need to be waiting on anything else. I waited on the Lord because everybody else and everything else, my money couldn't do it. My spouse couldn't do it. My friends couldn't do it. My job couldn't do it. Church couldn't do it. I need to get in the presence of the Lord. And somebody, I'm talking to somebody tonight, that you need to get on your knees and you need to wait on the Lord. I ain't talking about stay there until you hear from God. But you stay on your knees, I mean, your prayer don't change. Even though your situation don't change, your prayer shouldn't change. He said, I waited on the Lord. I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm moving on, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. This is, this is something that blessed my soul. I waited patiently on the Lord and he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slime pit and out of the mud and the mar. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Somebody say it with me. To stand. Stand through the fire with trial, through the wind and the rain and the, and the storms that are coming your way that you can't even see clearly. Your life is so messed up because you have no peace. It could be in a relationship. I'm talking to somebody here. 
You never fell in love with somebody. You in love with them and you you're doing everything you can to keep them and they giving you their backside to kiss. And that's not sitting well with you. And it affects your praise. It affects your worship because you care about them and they don't care about you. Or you've been broken hearted. Or maybe you finance. Or maybe you lost your job. Somebody out there might have a sick child. Or you may be sick yourself. And you've been praying and waiting on this healing and a manifestation from God. You heard scriptures. You heard preaching that excited you. But as soon as the preaching was done, as soon as the church service was over, you find yourself right back in that same rut. I, I know I'm talking to somebody out there. But you hang on in there. You wait on the Lord and see when he come through. God is faithful to his promises. His promises are yea and amen. But sometimes, we got to learn how to wait. What does it mean to wait patiently for God? I know I'm still talking about peace. We're still talking about peace. We're still talking about the peace, okay? Uh, finding your peace in the middle of chaos. That's how you find it. Sometimes you got to wait. Sometimes you got to thirst after it. You got to be hungry for it. You got to desire it. You got to want it. What does it mean to wait patiently for God? What does it mean to wait upon the Lord? In the scripture, the word wait means to hope, to anticipate, and to trust. Can I say that again? It means to wait with hope. Hope meaning that what I'm desiring is not empty. I know it's coming. I know my fulfillment is coming. I know the blessing. I know this situation is going to turn around. I have hope in God, not in man, not even in my flesh, but my hope is in God. When we lose a loved one that we know serve God and, and serve God the best of their ability, and they were showing up saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. When we cry, there's nothing wrong with crying. I don't, I'm not an advocate against crying. If you love somebody, you care about them, yes, we weep for them because they're dear to our heart. They mean something to us. But if they're saved and they know the Lord, we shouldn't be crying as if we have no hope. That we don't know that victory has already been won. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, your sins and mine. And death couldn't contain him to the grave. That he got up on the third day. You're talking about peace. That's the peace of God. Knowing that my loved one is going to be with the Lord. When he said he went to prepare a place, that place is for them now. And I'm coming soon. The key is, are you ready? Are you ready when your time comes? That's another, another message for another day. It really is. It means hope, anticipation, and the trust. To hope and trust in the Lord requires faith. It also requires patience. Humility, meekness, long-suffering. These are all the gifts that we should, as believers, should be possessing in our behavior, in our character, how we carry ourselves. Now, I'm not saying you won't make no mistakes. I'm not saying that you won't mess up from time to time. But we have a Savior. We have a relationship with Him. We accept that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for our sins. God said, you believe on Him, I got you covered. You believe on my Son, I got you back. No matter what you're going through, repent. You belong to me. Uh, you didn't choose me, according to St. John 16, 15, 16. You didn't choose me. He said, but I chose you. I pick you. I hand selected you. That, that's something to be thankful for. That ought to give you peace when you feel like giving up. That you have been hand selected, hand picked by God. He picked you when you didn't even deserve it. When you were walking away from him, he didn't walk away from us. Hallelujah, somebody. You ought to give him a praise right there. I'm moving right along because I want to get to the PowerPoint, but I just want to get this out of the way. The hope and trust in the Lord requires faith, patience, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Sometimes you got to put up with somebody or put up with yourself for a long period of time. But be of good cheer. St. John 16, 33. Said in this life, you shall have trouble, trials, and tribulations, but be of good cheer. Hallelujah. That's the peace. He said, Hang in there. Wait for me. 
the peace is on the way. He already established the peace. He already made provision for the peace. What it is, we have to we have to catch up to the word of God. We have to start believing in God. Instead of just quoting it and saying it to tickle other people's ears and not believe it in our heart. He says, hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against me. God. We don't want to sin against him. We don't want to hear his word and then don't believe it or trust in it. What you're going through, give it to God and really give it to God. I'm talking to you. Really give it to God. Turn it over to him. Turn it over to him. It's like I'm sitting in a chair. Turn it completely over to him. I don't mean to be wearing, wearing this paper in your face, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. First of all, for being home, I, I'm, I'm feeling so relaxed. Thank you, Pastor Duncan. But just to let you know that I am excited about the Lord, even though times I've been mad with him, I felt like giving up. But where am I going to go? Where are you going to go? Wait, talk to Mr. Gary. Where are you going to go? I have nowhere to go. Because he brought me out of the muck and the mar. He is the one that put my feet upon a rock, a solid rock, a solid foundation. So even if I fall, I'm not sinking. It says the muck in the morning, something where you sink, where you feel like you're trapped and you can't get out. I'm falling upon a rock. It might be hard. It might be trying at times. But guess what? I can pick myself up off of this rock and still have a foundation to stand on where I can be unwavering when the wind comes, even though it might blow, even though it might call me to bend its way. But I still have this solid rock that I can stand on. Amen. Jesus prayed and waited for the people eagerly. They anticipated. Uh, Jesus waited for the people when he walked upon Jerusalem, Judea, wherever. Jesus waited upon the people as a waiter waits to serve us with food. Like Jesus, when he washed the disciples' feet, he waited for them. He waited, meaning he took a towel wrapped around his waist. And he told them to do likewise. He said, as I wash your feet, wash one another's feet. Jesus didn't just tell us to wait for him. He waited on us. When you were sick, Jesus was there. When you were homeless, Jesus was there. When you felt like all things have turned against you, that you lost so much, Jesus was still there. Waiting for you to call upon him. Waiting for you to seek after this peace. He was waiting for you. He served us. He served us with his word. He served us, he served us through the shedding of his blood. His work was not in vain. His death was not in vain. That was him waiting on us. And we can't wait a few minutes. The Lord turn us around. But we have to do it by faith. By faith. Long suffering. Hope anticipating God to turn the situation around. Amen? All right, we're going to move right along. That was just a little icebreaker there. Now we're going to get into the lesson. We talked about um, chaos meaning, complete disorder and confusion. Finding peace in the middle of the chaos. Here's some similar words for chaos. Disorder, disarray, disorganized, confused, mayhem. These are all the things we go through in life, the challenging parts of our life that we don't like. But once again, you can find peace in the middle of this. Madness, havoc, turmoil. Those are some of the things. Here's the foundation scripture here. That's what I want to get to. This is the foundation scripture of this lesson tonight. It says, pray and believe. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. If you don't have peace, you better ask it. If any man lack in anything, let him ask of God, according to the book of James, chapter 1. If you lack in wisdom, ask of God. If you lack in understanding of his word, ask of God. He would not hold it back. He would give it to you freely. If your heart is in the right place and you truly desire to know more about the Lord, and you truly want to get a clear understanding so you can walk circumspectly to his word. He would give it to you. He will send you to place. He'll send you to Bible study. He'll send you to the right pastor. He'll send you to the right leadership. He'll show you on, the, on TV 
what to listen to, what not to listen to. The Holy Spirit promised to lead us in God's all truth. And that's what I love about the scripture. Verse 6, it says, with thanksgiving, make our requests known. Be thankful, even though you don't have it. That's where the faith kicks in. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11, hope is the substance. It's something that you're hoping for and the evidence that you cannot see. Don't miss this. You can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. But you got to believe by faith. By faith, by faith. With thanksgiving, make your request known to God. It didn't say to other people. It says to God. And the peace of God. There it is. I'm just not talking about worldly peace. When you just get some rest. Oh, I had a good night's sleep. But your body's doing. No, I'm talking about when everything is falling. Everything. I don't know your situation. I might not never mention your situation tonight. Or what you're going through. And you might look at this tape. This video and say. Well, that's not for me. Only because I didn't mention what you're going through. I don't have to mention, God knows, and God cares. And some of these familiar stories, or some of the testimonies you might hear over the next few weeks coming from me, I pray that will be a blessing to turn your situation around, where you get a clear understanding of what this godly peace means. According to the scripture, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses, succeed, goes above and beyond all our understanding. Our minds will not be able to wrap itself around the love of God, the direction of God, the hope of God, the blessings of God, the promises of God. He, it says, surpass all understanding and will guard your heart and your mind. The way you think, the way you feel, the way you move, guard it. He will guard it. He will protect it. He will block off those things that would deter you from giving God what's due unto his name. And that is the highest praise. And that is the utmost respect. And that is living according to how he ordained us to live. Amen. Amen. Will guard your heart and mind. Through who? Once again, through his son. Through the promise. He sent his son. St. John 3.16. For God so loved us. Whether you believe that or not. For he so loved us that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that we might have life and have life more abundant and for e ever, for eternity. I don't know about y'all, but if you can grab that in your spirit, that all will bring you some peace. That meaning that no matter what I'm going through, I'm connected. I'm connected to him. I'm connected to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can shout right there. According to the Bible, the peace of God, which transcends, transcends all understanding and the harmony and the calmness of the body, the mind, and the spirit, trusting in the power of God, the power and the grace, the power. I mean, there's nothing God can't do. There's nothing God can't fix. The question is, will he? Whether he do it, whether he answer your question or not, it doesn't mean he's not God. He's still God. He's still faithful. He's still our eternal and everlasting, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent, omnipotent. He's still all these things. Whether he... Answer your prayers when you feel whether he answer your prayers or not. Remember, he is still God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. You're still going to have to stand before him one day. Once it's all over, at the judgment seat, once we stand before the Lord, we're going to have to give account for every idle word. That's the word of God. That, that, that can be scary for most, because it is for me. Because I think about all the things I've thought and did and when I knew better and but God's grace and the power of his love the power of his love is you can't explain it with words this is not words that can fit or satisfy our spirit enough 
to be able to truly define the, the length of his love towards us. I don't know about y'all, but that's that's another thing to be thankful for, the godly peace. What is peace of God, and how can I experience it? Most of Paul's letters, we know Paul is the author of this book. Paul's letters begin with the word grace and peace to you from God, our Father, Lord, and Savior. We went over that last week. Uh, peace is a state of tranquility and quietness of the spirit that transcends circumstances. Amen? It's that peace. It's that quietness. It's that calmness that everything is falling around me, but I got that peace. That's the peace of God, that you still hear the quietness and the voice of God in the midst of a clouded and perverted world. We, we, we know about the thing. We know about the wars, the Israel and the, the Russia and Ukraine we, and Hamas and all this deadly violence that's going on. But we have violence in our backyard. We have the crime, the black-on-black -black crime. We have young Robin and old, old Robin and young. We have so much turmoil and chaos that's going on. And yes, God say, I'll give you peace in the middle of all that. The political wars, the racism, you name it. God said, I have the power and authority to give you peace in that if you're willing to wait. If you're looking, willing to seek and to search for it. Remember, you might have to search for it. You might get to fight for this thing. God already done it. But God needs to see your heart. How far are you willing to go? Are you willing to get up and go to prayer meeting? Are you willing to get up and go to Bible study after you don't went to church on Sunday? Or is that too much? Uh, God, has God done anything for you? you? Have you called anybody? Have you invited anybody to church? You say, well, I don't want to invite them this Sunday because I don't know. What, just because you ain't a part of the service. Invite somebody out to church. Matter of fact, I'm opening the invitation right now. Anybody here past the word, invite somebody to church and believe by faith that a word is going to be designed just for them to set the captives free. And watch how God bless you and bless them. The peace of God. Not as the world. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It states, please write this scripture down, please. They will bless you. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Sanctify, set you apart completely. Not halfway. No, 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 no. We want to be sanctified completely. We want to be set apart for the use and the work of God. If I could stop there right there for a moment that... You could be without peace because you haven't lined up with what God has been asking you to do. People have been coming to you, saying that, you know, encouraging you. They see your hospitality, they see how you carry yourself. They see the gifts that God had given you, and everybody can see it but you. You said, I'm waiting for the Lord. The Lord is speaking every day. If you don't do nothing but one little thing of kindness, act of kindness, or help somebody or bring somebody to church or tell somebody about Jesus or, or feed somebody who's hungry or somebody might be need of money. And you, you say, well, I don't have money. Uh, Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. You, you can do that. But such as I do have, I have the word of God in me. I give it unto you. And that would be enough to be able to bless somebody. As long as you're doing it with the right spirit and the right motive. You ain't trying to shine to be standing out there and say, look at me praying and touching and laying hands on everybody when your heart is so far from God. No, I'm talking about when you you just want to do something because God has been good to you. This, this is what set me apart completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's coming. He's coming back. He's coming back. And we need to be ready. We need to be ahead of this peace of God so we don't get distracted from the weight of the world. We need to we need to not get distracted, just like this phone call to try to come in. We can't get distracted from the word of God. We have to be tuned. We have to be lined up. We have to be standing in unity and firm with God, knowing that if we trust in him, that everything is going to be all right. Can we get an amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to move right along. Um, 1 Thessalonians, um, just read it. 
Um, the primary aim of First Thessalonians is to encourage, to encourage Jesus believers to continue to progress in their faith. And Paul ad addressed uh, some particular concerns to this effect. He talked about se sexual uh, morality. He talked about communi community relationships and the return of Jesus. He talked about these issues that they were wrestling with in their area, what was going on in their region. And Paul was um, doing his first journey, second missionary journey. Paul was always addressing some area to get people out of that chaos. Some were fighting amongst each other. Some had some outward influence. Some had some idols that they were worshiping and they had their special belief that they believe in their traditions. And Paul was preaching to set them free from all this chaos that was clouding up their spirit that they couldn't hear from God clearly. And that's our job, is to those that are hurting. If we've been called to minister or any type of hospitality, any type of service to others, and we've been gifted that, that's our job to make sure we bring clarity and honesty. And also, we need to be up on our current events. We can't be talking about something that people are not seeing out there in the world. If they're seeing this stuff going on, we're acting like it doesn't exist. God didn't tell us to be ignorant. He told us to be vigilant. He told us to be prepared. He told us to always have to be ready for, to give an answer, those who ask you. And we should be defenders of the gospel, even though the gospel don't need to be defended. We need to be able to represent the gospel living in a chaotic situation, living in a chaotic world, being able to speak to these situations, the sexual immorality, the communication, uh, community relationship, the communication uh, and the community was, it was turmoil, fighting and warring against one another. And he also had to remind them that Jesus was going to return. Amen. Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 16. And as for all who walk, Galatians six sixteen, And as for all who walk by the rules, peace and mercy be upon them and upon Israel of God. This was very interesting here. And and, and and you notice how it quoted at the end, it says, and upon Israel, the Israel of God. Everybody in Israel, everybody in the Holy Land ain't of God. There's some that might not never accept the Son, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's some that might not, not even, even obey the laws of the Bible, the spiritual laws. They might not even acknowledge them or care. But he said, he said in this text, he said, Israel upon the Israel of God, meaning they belong to God. And that we have been adopted into the family, that we have the same blessing as the Israelites do, the same promises that Abraham had. We have been purchased by his blood. We have been bought into the family. We have been adopted, not as the world adoption. We're not stepkids. We are biological children of God. And we have so much to be thankful for. And that is the godly peace that I'm talking about. Having that godly peace, knowing who you are, knowing who your God is and how much he loved us and how he has sanctified us. How he given his power and his love towards us. And he have given us his promise. Promise in his son, Jesus Christ. And in Galatians here, talking about the peace and mercy upon them, us. That we walk by the rules, the instructions, the ordinance of God. What God has laid before us through the word of God. You might not want to read it right now, but you should. But the Bible tells us, Faith come by hearing. If you want to read it, listen to it. Play it in your ear while you're in the car. Listen to the word of God and it will change you. Last time I talked about um, when I was on, uh, sick, I was out for disability years back and with my back injury, I talked about how um, 
the money wasn't coming in or felt less than a man. I couldn't work around the house. I couldn't even go out and play with the kids and my wife outside, enjoy the, and I was having a pity party. And I told you I was messing around, listening to TV and I heard somebody say, a preacher say, uh, praise the Lord in the middle of your storm. And I had the nerve to call on the Lord, you know, in my funk, complaining, whining, like we do. Whining don't get you nowhere. It didn't get me nowhere. God didn't come heal me no quicker. But when I talked about this pain that would lead into the promise or the promise or the peace, your pain, your situation that you're going through, if you have a deep desire after God, even though you might be mad with him or you might be disappointed with him because he didn't answer your prayer when you want he you wanted him to answer and you were still mad, but you belong to God. God has this unique way of finding a way to your heart to make you cry and say, mercy, <laughs> have mercy, forgive me and repent. And I remember throwing up my hands. I said, walking around the house and I just said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And I said the name of Jesus one too many times and the Holy Spirit showed up. His peace came when I felt empty, when I felt alone, when I felt angry, when I felt less than a man. You you have to be in that position and know how I felt. You might say, oh, that's nothing. I done lost it. Yeah, I done lost loved ones too. I done lost a mother, a father, a brother, close friends, two close friends of mine, the ones I hung out with. I done lost some things. I know I feel to lose somebody that you care about. But I might not have lost a spouse or anything like that. But somebody listened to me that you're saved and you lost somebody close and you ain't got no peace. i just been giving you scriptures that release you from that bondage that the enemy had placed on you because there's work for you to do. God got his hands on you. There's some people waiting to hear from you. There's some people waiting to hear you say hallelujah, how good God is and mean it and not just doing it for show. But you tell him, you know what? I felt angry at God. But you know what? He still was there for me. He still provided for me. He still opened doors for me. He still healed me. He still was walking with me. He still was carrying me. These are the kind of things that bring the peace of God. Even though you went through pain. Are you following me now? Pressure leads to peace. Poverty. Lack of money. Lack of things that you desire. Leads you to peace. Can I go a little farther? Okay, all right, thank you. A group of Christians known as the Judaizers were preaching a gospel of legalism rather than grace. They had their own agenda. They were preaching something different from the grace and the forgiveness and the love of God. Paul's main purpose in writing the letter to the Galatians was to repeat the true nature of the gospel. Good God. Y'all are y'all hearing me? Paul was persuaded that he wasn't gonna let life, death, persecution, anything separate him from the love of God. And Paul was he was repeating the truth, true nature of the gospel. He was telling them that the gospel was really good news even though you're living in a chaotic situation. Are you following me now? You see how this thing is coming together? Paul was telling us, and he's telling us through his writings, that you can't come up with a bad situation. I've been there. I was on my way to the master to kill some Christians, and I ran into this Jesus when I thought I was doing right. And he blinded me, and he changed my course. He allowed pain and pressure to come in my life. And he changed my course. And when he called my name, I heard his name. And he told me who he was. If Jesus ever, if you ever have a encounter with him and he'd really tell you who you are, that is peace. Because you know it ain't nothing spooky when you can hear and feel the voice of God. I wish I had somebody listening to me right now saying, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. I felt that. And I haven't felt it in a long time. I got some good news for you. You can get that feeling again if you seek after him as a deer panting after the water broke. 
My soul panicked after you. These are the type of the things we need to do as believers. And remember, when Paul, I mean, excuse me, when David said, I called upon the Lord, I waited patiently on the Lord. Remember, David realized others was watching him. David realized that people was watching his actions. What I want to tell you, believer, they were watching you. They were watching what you say out of your mouth. Are you talking with a forked tongue? Saying, God will bless you here when you get home and you cursing everything that happened in your life. Oh, what was me? What was this? What was that? Have you taken time out to say, Lord, forgive me for doubting you. Lord, you brought me out before you bring me out again. I, I, I can't go there. I'm finna, I'm finna go off in another race. Let, let me get back to this. <laughs> he was preaching to the Galatians. Uh, was, he was repeating the true nature of the gospel. He was preaching that we are justified, made righteous and sanctified and made more Christ-like through our faith in Jesus Christ alone. Our faith, believing in God through tough times, through chaotic situations, that our faith will be made strong. We'll be sanctified. We'll be made righteous, right standing with God. I don't, that's peace for me. If I know God's looking at me as somebody in right standing with him and he sanctified me and I accept his blessings and now I'm walking in them, that's a peace. Knowing that even though my current situation might not look good, but knowing that everything is going to be all right sooner or later. Ah, good God Almighty. The shepherd of peace. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. This is the NIV version. It said, now may God of peace, who through the blood of eternal, uh, excuse me, eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the good shepherd of the sheep. Now, I, I know people joke about it, that sheep is a dumb, dumb animal or animal that need to be led. And that's who we are. We, we somebody who need to be led because Think about it. I, I've been I've been brought up in a good home. My my father was a pastor. My mother loved the Lord. They you know they took us to church. They did the best they could raising us you know through poverty and tough times. But they still kept food on our table. I didn't realize at a young age what I was going through or what status we were living in. I ate. I had clothes on my back. I can't sit here and say what was me. I had a good meal. I had a hot meal. I had a place to sleep. Clothes was clean. Went to school. Uh, got beaten. Yes, I did. I'm going to tell you when I did wrong. Got disciplined in love. Because I remember my mom, we were, <laughs> the time me and my brother had got in trouble. And when one get in trouble, like we both get in trouble because we go to pointing at each other. He did it, he did it. And mom said, I know how to solve that. And she'll take care of both of us. So she said, if one of y'all lying, I'm, I'm going to get one of y'all. But one thing I loved about, well, I, I didn't love it then. But I can appreciate now that my mom, when she disciplined us, she told us what she disciplined us for. She let us know what we did wrong. Even though we didn't want to hear it. She said, I love you. But I won't let you tear up my house. I won't let y'all be fighting against each other. Or you know you had no business touching that. Or that didn't belong to you. This is some of the things, parents, grandparents, it ain't too late. We need to start telling our children, our grandchildren, we need to start correcting them and letting them know the truth and then the consequence. The thing that Paul was expressing through his writings was letting people know the love of God. Let them know that we're sanctified, we trust in him, that we can be set apart and made righteous. But he also had to correct some of the wrongdoings. Like I said, Paul realized, that Paul said, you can't tell me what God can't forgive you for. I was killing Christians on the way to Damascus. And I met him, and he changed my life. He allowed me to go through three days of blindness, separation from him. Sent me a man named Ananias, called on Ananias. And when Ananias showed up, laid hands on me. And I was determined after that, that the one that brought peace in the midst of my chaos, I want to serve him to the day I die. And that's what we need to do as believers, get hungry and thirsty after God. Think about what he done for you. 
Don't think about what you're currently going through right now. Think about where God brought you, where he delivered you from. And then where he's taking you to. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The good shepherd. We're talking here. Back to the text. Hebrews 13. It says, He will brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd that I don't have to want for nothing. Whatever you're going through tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm winding this thing up. I'm excited about where we're going to go. We're going, we're going to cover some things uh, um, on our next class. We're going to be pulling out some biblical characters and talking about um, the pressure they went through, the chaotic situation they went through. And Esther's one of them. We're going to talk about Esther and uh, how she had to make a tough decision. In order to have peace, sometimes you got to go against the grain. Uh, sometimes you need other people to encourage you or to help you to make some decisions. This, this is how God works. He connects us to work together in unity. And back to the text here when it talks about the shepherd, the good shepherd. He is our good shepherd. Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd that we don't have to want for anything. Think, think about that. The Lord is my shepherd. Don't, don't read too fast. Across the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me lie by the green passage. You know, we, we, we can quote all six verses. Good for you. God bless you. But when he talks about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down by these green pastures, the waters, still waters. Think about that. He bring peace to the sheep because he's there. We're safe around him. And I'll close with this tonight. Jesus Christ paid the price for us by the shedding of his blood. Once he rose from the dead, he visited the disciples. He talked to them. He ate with them. And then he told them I was going home to sit on the right hand of the Father. But he promised not to leave us alone. He promised us a comforter, which is God in the spirit living on the inside of us, that we don't have to be alone. So when the chaos comes, we don't have to worry about, I'm alone, I'm in, I'm in this all by myself. No, God said, no, no, no. You accepted my son. I sent you a comforter. I sent you some help. And my help will lead you to peace. But you got to trust it. And my closing tonight. And the title of this class is Finding Your Peace in the Middle of Chaos. You can find that very peace. If you're not saved, give me your heart to Jesus. It starts right there. And remember, Jesus might be gone. You might not see him. But the Holy Spirit, 100% God, can live on the inside of you. And I just want to encourage you tonight. I thank you for listening. I thank you for paying attention. We do have more to cover. Like I said, next week we're going to talk about, actually we're going to talk a little bit more about David. We're going to talk about some other um, main characters in the Old Testament and New Testament that had to find this peace that we're talking about. The godly kind of peace. The, the godly peace that stands forever. It, 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 it never goes away. You might lay it down, but you can also pick it back up. Amen. Thank you for being with us. We're going to close in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you that we can find peace in a chaotic situation. And we thank you that the answer is in your word. So be encouraged tonight. Pray for somebody else operating your gift. And see won't God bless you. See won't he turn things around in your life. Amen. My name is Pastor Gary Mack. Until we meet again, have a blessed night.